Okay, hi Virgos, welcome back to my channel. Guys, if you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you so much for supporting the channel. So we're going to go ahead and do a pick a pile today, Virgos. And it's between number one to three, okay? So I always say to you guys, between number one, two and three, always pick a number from now, which one stands out more to you. And we're just going to kind of see what the message is for you in that pile, okay? Now, this is a general message, so it may not resonate with everyone. Take the parts that resonate for you and leave the rest. Anybody interested in a personal reading, my information is always down below. Thanks to those who do reach out for those, and thanks to those who donate to the channel. And to those of you who do subscribe, it's very much appreciated. So I do hope that everybody is well. America, I hope that you are enjoying your holiday season, okay? I think you got to call it Turkey Day. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, let's jump into this reading. So, part one, we're going to be starting you, let's say around, I'm going to say around one minute. So what do we have for part one? Thank you, Spirit. What is the energy here? Show me. For part one. The energy for par one thank you spirit what is the message here what are we getting stuck on meditation for clarity so par one the card that is coming out for you it says meditation for creativity and i just saw meditation for clarity okay so some of you you may definitely need to take out some sort of quiet time okay uh, maybe listen to some sort of frequencies but meditation is just about you kind of closing off from the outside world and very much concentrating on the messages the visions what it is that you're hearing seeing um, because it feels like spirit is trying to help you here with something and it could have to do with you maybe starting some sort of a new project here um, maybe something that you have already started, or it could just be something that, you know, spirit knows that you're very much gifted and skilled at, and they kind of want you to put that to use here. So let's see what the, med um, what the message says. Meditation for clarity. Um, if you can hear any noise in the background, do excuse it. It is just Isis playing with her ball. <laughs> so meditation for clarity is... On page 40, that could be significant for someone. But if I had to break those numbers down, okay, and took just the number four, it would give me that energy of almost like the four of wands. You doing something here that is going to create some sort of stability for you, create some sort of a solid foundation, okay? So let's see what it says. It's also a number three in the book, which could be significant here. Um, the three would give me like the three of wands, where it's that energy of you very much sitting back and looking at the bigger picture here um, of a situation here, right? It's almost that manifesting energy of you seeing, let, let's say you have a business or something, right? And, and you don't really know if it's going to take off. So you don't really know if you want to put the effort and energy into it. It's almost that energy of manifesting what you want it to become into before it becomes that. let's see what it says it says it can be hard for us to see things clearly and the closer we are to them the harder it can be this is especially true when we are looking at ourselves or at the important issues that affect our lives when strong emotion is involved that makes it even tougher but it doesn't mean that it's impossible just that we have to make a special effort to reach for clarity. It says action. It says meditate on the statement while focusing on the picture on the card. Ask yourself, do, you, do I see myself with clear and honest eyes? What about the people and situations around me? Is there something I know in my heart I need to look at more clearly? 
try to put aside emotions for a moment and simply be. It says, then look again. The divination for the card says, this card is a suggestion that it is time to seek out clarification of an issue or issues or to look more closely at something that perhaps you have been viewing through closed, clouded and emotional eyes. It says, do not take things at surface value, but rather make sure that you can think, but rather make sure that what you think you are seeing is really the truth. And then it has a bit where it tells you you can do some sort of magic spell, <laughs> but we're not going to do that today. So it makes me feel like power one, that spirit is asking you to see something with truthful eyes. So whether this is about another person, um, whether this is a situation that you have tried to kind of um, maybe turn a blind eye to. But let's see more. What is this energy for power one? Thank you, spirit. Meditation for clarity. Why is it here? Show me. Isis. Spirit, give me some cards. What is the message for part one? So the first card coming out here, part one, is the full card. And the full card is a zero. And the full card can talk about going on a brand new journey. The full card also talks about taking a leap of faith here. You know, it can talk about maybe someone here wants to travel, right? Um, take some sort of adventure, this is about new beginnings, the full. It's also Aries and Aquarius energy here. All right, sorry, Pa One. I had to take Isis out. She'd be doing too much. <laughs> She's trying to pull down my Christmas tree. And yes, I have my Christmas tree up already. <laughs> All right, Spirit, what else do we have for Pa One? The full card. So you have the temperance coming out here, which is Sagittarius energy, and then you have the Six of Cups. For some of you, it gives me this energy where, especially with the Six of Cups underneath the Fall, for some of you, this may be an energy where, you know, maybe you have been meditating and very much trying to figure out whether you should leave something in the past with the Six of Cups energy. Maybe some of you have... It's kind of giving me this feeling where some of you may have, um, I don't know, maybe you have been repeating like a certain pattern or maybe you just have been living like the same lifestyle for a long time. And maybe it's got to that point where, you know, it's kind of become like Groundhog Day or something has kind of become repetitive or maybe even a little bit boring, right? Sometimes a full card can talk about someone who is maybe craving or seeking some sort of, like I said, some sort of adventure here. What is a temperance? Because a temperance can talk about balance. It can talk about patience here. But show me more. What is the temperance energy? The page of wands. See, I also feel like, because I also see the temperance as divine intervention, right? Your ancestors and your angels very much around you. Um, and with the page of wands, it could talk about that maybe they have been sending you some sort of signs and messages here. OK, or maybe they have been trying to send you some sort of um, confirmation that, hey, listen, you taking this leap of faith is going to be good news for you. It's almost like for some of you, this could even be with the fool and the six of cups where spirit is saying it's OK to kind of, you know, maybe revert back to, a little bit to that like childlike energy here. What is the Fool and the Six of Cups? You know, the Six of Cups talks about youthfulness. It can talk about your childhood. It can talk about, you know, going back to that energy where, where you know, we you know when you think of children and they're very creative children, right? And it's because, like, I feel like their minds are free. You know, it's that energy of them feeling free and unencumbered, right? You know, they say um, 
children are very innocent when it comes to what they say you answer child something they go and tell you the truth kind of energy you know and it's just because um like i said of that light-hearted innocence energy here so you got the hierophant coming out in the reverse some of you you may have allowed i almost want to say parents for some of you or maybe you have just kind of grown up doing what people have expected of you what people feel like is tradition. Um, it almost feels like for someone here, it, it, you know, in, in a very kind of positive way, not in a negative way, but it almost feels like for someone here, it's almost like it's time for you to break the rules a little bit or even bend them, you know? What is the Hierophant in the reverse? The six of wands, victory and success. This makes me feel like it's time for somebody to go out there and show the world the real you. It can talk about some sort of public recognition, um, but I just feel like for someone here, it's this more this energy of you winning. It's almost this energy of you feeling good for achieving some sort of goal or for following your own mind here. It's almost like a, <laughs> I'm trying to put this into words, the way they're giving it to me. It's almost like um, a secret victory, but within self. What is the temperance and the page of wands? So we have the seven of wands coming out here. And we have the Eight of Pentacles. Now, the Seven of Wands is definitely an energy of you standing up for yourself. But like I said, I was feeling like this temperance was giving me more an energy of your ancestors and angels. And definitely paired with the Seven of Wands for me. Because that talks about them saying, hey, listen, whatever journey you want to go on, we're going to be right beside you. And we're very much going to protect you here, right? This is the Seven of Wands is about standing your ground. So I don't know if you feel like people will be against you in terms of whatever it is that it is that you want to do. But this talks about holding your own. You know, so that energy of not being easily influenced. You know, say if you told someone, hey, listen, I want to go hiking in the mountains. Right. I just got this calling that I need to go to the mountains and I need to just pack my bag. Right. And I just need to go on this adventure. And then you have a parent or you have a friend or even a partner take it out at resonance that says to you hey no don't do that are you crazy like you know you can't go up to the mountains or you can't do this it's this energy of there's no such word as can't you got the eight of pentacles and the eight of pentacles can talk about your creativity here right it can talk about maybe someone here wants to become self-employed or they want to start building some sort of business or you want to start um i don't know um, it, um, how would you say it? Investing in some sort of trade or something like that, right? This is an energy where spirit is saying, listen, if you fight for what you want, right? You're very much going to get the outcome here. Now, this eight of pentacles also can talk about, depending on what your situation is, it talks about hard work and it talks about commitment. It talks about you being focused on something. Give me one more for the seven of wands and the eight of pentacles. Thank you. The Page of Swords. Yeah. Something here has been delayed. You know, the Page of Swords can also talk about, you know, someone here may be very curious. You may have been gathering information about something. Give me more on this Page of Swords. And for some of you, you know, maybe you have to keep something in silence here. Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands energy is about you being confident. Maybe some of you feel like you have a Queen of Wands that is very much heavy around you. Maybe this is someone that keeps an eye on you here. But the Queen of Wands... This talks about being courageous. It almost makes me want to use the word spontaneous as well here. Who is this Queen of Wands for part one? 
a king of swords, someone who has a lot to say for some of you. And I'm telling you, this could be, I, it makes me feel like parents for some of you or somebody that maybe you look up to or someone's opinion that you value here. Because we've got a king of swords, a queen of wands, and then we've got the page of swords. Makes me feel like mother, father, and child. <laughs> okay, Spirit, anything else for part one? So we've got a four of swords. So a lot of contemplating going on here with the four of swords. And then we have the two of swords. You see, it just makes me feel like, because the two of swords can talk about being at a stalemate, right? It can talk about someone who feels like they're in a difficult position in terms of making a choice about something. And if I was to add these two together, the four of swords and two of swords, that would make the six of swords. And that talks about moving to calmer waters. Or again, I could see it as, like I said, someone maybe wants to go on some sort of, um, I don't know, they want to go and explore. Give me one more page of cups, but I feel like someone here doesn't want to upset another person or other people. Four of swords and the two of swords. King of pentacles on the six of wands. But I feel like for someone, you know, it feels like this journey is going to ground you. For others of you, if, it, if it's about a business or um, a project here, it feels like, you know, it's going to bring in some sort of financial stability here for you because that is what the King of Pentacles is. It's also your energy, right? I just feel like there's success around somebody taking a leap of faith in this situation. Okay, this could even be about somebody maybe wanting to marry or propose to someone else, but they feel like, um, like I said, there may be other energies here that don't necessarily agree. Give me a card for part one. Thank you, Spirit. Do you want Pa one to know? Give me two cards. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you. And give me one fortune card for Pa one. Okay, so the first one here that I'm seeing here is the number eight. So that could be significant for someone. Um, the number eight is making me feel like, again, this energy of somebody feeling like they're stuck in some sort of continuous loop. But it is the dragonfly. And it says, have confidence during this time of great joy, renewal and connection to spirit. Now you have a card that came out is crystal. It says, have faith and hope. Because there is something positive on the, it, there is something positive and new on the horizon that you can't yet see. But it takes that leap of faith, right? The full card was the first card out. And then you have Oshina. It says, take action. You're in touch with your truth in this situation. And you need to trust your gut and lovingly assert yourself. So part one, that is the message that I have for you. All right, spirit, where are we? Let's say uh, 19. I'm going to say 1940. So the year 1940 could be significant for someone here. It doesn't have to be. What is the energy here, spirit, for pile two?
Okay, what are we getting stuck on though? It says connect to Gaia. But let's see what fell out. So the one that actually came out for you, which was in the reverse, but it says fire magic. Connect to Gaia, fire magic in the reverse. Hmm. Okay. So let's see what it says. Now, I'm, I'm going to put it out there, okay? I, I'm trying my best to pull away from that kind of negative energy and, um, you know, try and thinking of more ideas to do for readings where, where it's just kind of specifically directed to my Virgos, okay? But with that connect to Gaia, it makes me feel like Virgos in power number two, some of you need to stay grounded here, okay? Um, there could be some sort of fire magic that someone here may be doing and projecting towards you. But it was in the reverse. But besides that, let, let's move forward. Fire magic. What is the message for pile two? Thank you, spirit. Mm. Fire magic. So it is a number 63. Which could be significant or the number 36. It's also connected to the number five. So it could talk about an energy of change here. But the five, it can bring me to the five of wands, which talks about conflict. It talks about drama, chaos, jealousy. Too many people being involved in a situation here. But let's see. 63. Fire magic. Now it says, who hasn't been enchanted by the soft glow of candlelight or the cheerful dancing flames of a bonfire? It says fire magic is all around us and is perhaps the easiest to integrate into our everyday lives with a touch of kitchen witchery. It says the element of fire is all about creativity and passion and energy. But just like fire itself, too much of any of these things can burn us up and burn us out. On the other hand, if you're feeling as though your own internal flames are burning low, perhaps you need to add a little fire magic into your life. It says action. The simplest way to connect to the magic of fire is to light a candle. This can be anything from the smallest tea light on your altar to a set of beautiful beeswax tapers added to your dinner table. It says, light, light a candle and send out a prayer or just sit in meditation for five minutes as you watch the flame. It says, commit to lighting a candle, the same one briefly, or a series of candles that you can let burn, let burn down until they're gone. It says every night for a month and see if you don't feel a little bit more in tune with the power of fire. It says, but don't forget to use fire safe containers and don't leave it and don't leave lit candles unattended, especially around small children or pets. It says, do not, it says you don't want the power to go up in flames. So it said the divination is. This card has an obvious message. Time to connect with the magical aspects of fire. If you have a place to do so, it says light a bonfire and dance around it in celebration of this powerful element. If you don't, it says light a candle or stir a pot of something magical on the stove. Okay, <laughs> listen. It says add some spices for extra heat. And then you've got the magic spell. <laughs> Okay, pile two. What is this about for pile two? Thank you, spirit. Show me. What do we have for pile two? Some of you may have fire heavy in your chart. Maybe some of you do candle magic, right? One more shuffle. Thank you, spirit. What is the message for part two? So we have a page of cups coming out here.
we have the Hierophant out here again in the upright. What is the message for pile two? Thank you, Spirit. We have the Ace of Cups. What is the energy for pile two? Thank you. We have the High Priest. Oh, we have a pair out here. The Hierophant and the High Priestess. The Page of Cups and the Ace of Cups. Hmm. What is the Page of Cups and the Ace of Cups? And we have the Five of Pentacles and the Eight of Swords. Okay, Pile 2. It, it, it feels like there is someone here that wants to come out of the cold here with you. It feels like this person wants to give you some sort of an apology here. But you got the Eight of Swords, which tells me that someone here is very much in their head. Or this could be you, Pile 2, right? Maybe you want to reach out to someone. This Ace of Cups, it, it makes me feel like someone here is, is stuck in their head in terms of having some sort of new beginning. What is the Hierophant with the High Priestess? Yeah, we have the Knight of Cups. Oh, and we have the King of Cups. So we got all, we got Page to the Knight to the King. Now, for others of you, if I had to take away the energy of it even including anybody else, I feel like for some of my Pile 2, I feel like there's some sort of an upgrade in terms of your gifts. This makes me feel like your intuition steady getting stronger. Clarify this Five of Pentacles and this Eight of Swords. Damn, the Queen of Cups. So clarify the Knight of Cups and the King of Cups. And the Ten of Wands. I feel like someone here may be in their head, pile to um, about taking something to the next level. Why is the Ten of Wands here? The World Card. Ten of Wands with the World Card. Ten of Wands with the World Card. Judgment. Pile two, I feel like someone here may have to... Uh, it almost makes me want to say reconsider something here. You know, the judgment can talk about an awakening. Like I said, I feel like someone's definitely going to have some sort of upgrade here. So whether you're male or female, I feel like I want to say as well, okay? With the king and the queen out here. Some of you in pile two, you may be wondering if you can trust somebody. Now, it may be a water sign, Cancer Pisces or a Scorpio. Heavy Pisces out here. We have also um, Taurus Energy. But like I said, I feel like something here, it, it feels like someone here is, is meant to be either in some sort of relationship, partnership um, with someone. Show me more about Pile 2. Yeah, it's, like, it's almost like to come together to balance the scales here. Show me more for Pile 2. Mm, the Magician in the Reverse. What is the magician in the reverse? The tower and the nine of swords. Like I said at the beginning, I don't know if I felt like I was picking up some sort of spell work here, um, which is why it was important to keep yourself grounded. Now, someone definitely could have maybe tried to do some sort of manifestation work to bring you in, right? But um, I don't necessarily feel like that worked here. The magician in the reverse, to me, can talk about some sort of trickery. 
it to me can talk about some sort of manipulation. The magician in the reverse can also, to me, talk about, you know, wasted talents and things like that here. Yeah, illusion and deception. Now, this could also be, what is this magician? Show me what this is. Now, this is Virgo and Gemini energy. What is the magician in the reverse? The Four of Swords. Give me one more. But you see that energy of the, the Four of Swords in this person? It looks like they're in meditation here. This is also energy of healing. And then I'm seeing the Six of Swords flipping over, which is an energy of moving to calmer waters. For some of you in power too, if there was someone who was projecting some sort of energy towards you, it feels like that is being lifted here, right? Definitely an energy of betrayal with the Ten of Swords out here, Four of Swords and the Six of Swords. Someone may have been trying to keep you apart from, I want to say, maybe your counterpart, who it is that you're supposed to be with, who it is that you're supposed to reconcile with here. Give me one more, the Magician and the Four of Swords. Why is the Magician in the reverse? Thank you, Spirit. The Eight of Pentacles, yeah, some sort of spell work. Someone paid for something. You know, like I said, this doesn't have to be a relationship. This king and queen of cups energy could just be that two people that have gifts that maybe they're supposed to work together. Um, it could be totally separate, right? What is the eight of pentacles? And the knight of pentacles, yeah, to slow somebody down. To stop them from moving forward here. To keep someone single. One more. Queen of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Judgment again. The world card. One more for part two. Okay, two more. Yeah, I feel like balance is being restored. Seven of Cups, the Two of Swords. The confusion, confusion is being blocked. Or oh, that is what was keeping someone stuck here. Yeah, with the hanged man from going towards someone's wish fulfillment. The tower, the nine of swords and the page of pentacles. Someone here may have been worried that you was going to make some sort of practical decision. What came out? We have the three of wands and the eight of wands and they both came out sideways, which is a blockage. Now the three of wands can talk about waiting for your ships to come in or it can talk about you seeing the bigger picture of a situation. And the eight of wands is that energy of moving forward. It's also that energy of communication here. Give me a card, two cards for pile two. And one more. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you. Yeah, look at the bottom of the deck. You've got a Xana. And it says you are protected from all types of harm. It says the worst is now behind you. It says I ask you to relax and feel safe. Yeah, keep charging ahead. But let's see what came out for you. So you have Francesca. It says, what do you desire right now? It says, visualize it and it will come about. It says, negativity will block your progress. You also have Archangel Michael. It says, I am with you, giving you the courage to make life changes that will help you work on your divine life purpose. Like I said, I feel like there's, a, there's an energy here of two people that have some sort of purpose. Hierophant and the High Priestess, King and Queen of Cups. To me, that it, it kind of makes me feel like a very powerful spiritual pair. But take it how it resonates. Give me one card for pile two. Thank you, spirit. Oh, too many, too many, too many. But I am seeing the rising phoenix. I am seeing the luck. I'm seeing, oh, let me show you. <laughs> Rising Phoenix, rising from the ashes, right? Coming out victorious of whatever this negative energy was. You've got luck is on your side. You also have the chariot. It's okay to move forward now here. And look what's last card is, the marriage card. I'm telling you there's some sort of union here that is meant to come together. 
All right, I just need one card for pile two. Thank you, Spirit. All right, I'm going to take the two. I don't know. <laughs> I don't feel like arguing with spirit today. <laughs> so you have a number 26, okay, which boils down to a number eight. And we just saw the eight of wands here. So again, the plane would also represent, you know, travel or moving forward, right? Movement. It says a journey is indicated. It says either physically or metaphorically. It says your life will become more full. Uh, yeah, look at that. We have the lion, which is a number 16, which boils down to a number seven. Again, anytime I get the lion for me personally, it's that energy of the ancestors and the angels. OK, and it says harness the loyal and protective aura of the lion and charge ahead magnificently. OK, so pile number three, let's put you at 3620. And what is the message? What am I doing? For pile three. Now you guys know that I like to choose number three. So there may be even a message in here for me. Okay. What do we have for pile three? Thank you, Spirit. What is the message here? You know, Virgos, if you have any kind of like ideas of kind of, you know, subjects that you maybe want me to kind of do as a general, okay? Um, so bearing in mind that what you want to know may or may not come out in that message, do comment down below, you know? Because I mean, even though I have my like routine of what I do on what days, it would be nice to kind of inject something different into it and... and you know, it, you're the collective, I, I'm reading for you, so it would be nice to have your input in that, okay? So what do we have for pile three? Thank you, Spirit. What is the message for pile three? So we have coming out, it says plant the seeds, okay? And then follow your dreams. And then you have listening to wisdom. So, let's see. Plant the seeds for Paul Free. Mm, so, plant the seeds is a number 29, okay? The number 29 boils down to an 11. I'm hearing something, I don't know, someone here may have a life path, um, life path number 11. I believe that number 11 is a master number. And then it's also connected to the number 6. So the 6 of Wands is like that energy of victory and success. Again, that energy of public recognition. So, 29. So it says, all things that grow have to start somewhere. It says, with seeds, both actual and metaphorically. It says, whether it is the seed of an idea, a new beginning, or a garden of magical herbs, you have to plant it and then nurture it well to get the results you want. It says, caring for those seeds take effort. It says, but sometimes the biggest challenge is having the courage and forward momentum to plant them at all. It says, what seeds are you planting in your life? So that's for you to answer to yourself. Now the action says, plant a seed. Heck, plant a dozen. <laughs> it says, they're small. It says, do you like flowers? Then plant flower seeds. Like to cook, plant connery herbs or a simple vegetable like a lettuce or spinach. It says they grow fast and give you mere, nearly instant gratification. It says want something magical. It says plant the seeds for magical herbs or even the white sage used as sage smudge sticks or 
Of course, you could start on a new project that counts too. It says plant the seeds for anything that will grow over time and bring you joy. So you have the divination. It says this card probably isn't telling you to plant an actual seed. Instead, it suggests that it is time to start something new. It is time to look for a new job, embark on a new adventure or encourage a budding relationship. It says plant the seed for future growth. It says even if you have to start small, it says is there some project you have been considering? It says this card is a hint that you might, it, that it might be time to take the first step. And then you have the magic spell. Okay. So what is this for pile three? Which is interesting because I have, me personally, I don't know about anybody else who chose pile three, but I personally have been thinking about starting other things. I have been looking into it. You see, I'm one of those people where I'm not afraid of change. I just, you, you know, I just like my, um, how would you say, you know, when you have become comfortable or um, it, maybe even complacent, you know, in, in what it is that you do. And my brain kind of works like, especially when it comes to things like technology, I'd be like, you know, I'm kind of good over here. I know how everything works. I have it down to a T, X, Y, and Z. And then spirit will say to me, no, go, go over there and explore that. And I'll be like, but that's like learning something all over again. And spirit says, yeah, well, you know, we never stop learning. I'd be like, yeah, but, you know, can I learn something a little bit simpler? And spirit's like, no, no, you have to broaden your horizon and your mind. So go over there and look at that. And I'll be one of those kids and, you know, the, I don't know if you know, like in a class, right, you always got that one little kid that is just stubborn. And they don't like to listen, but they ain't necessarily rude or anything like that. They just want to do things their way. I'm that kid. That's me. Um, Palfrey. Thank you, Spirit. Plant the seeds. What is this? For Palfrey. Thank you, Spirit. What are we getting stuck on? Five of Swords. Okay, so we have coming out is the Devil in the Reverse. We have the Queen of Wands in the Reverse. Okay. Okay, what is this for Power Free? Thank you, Spirit. Why is the devil in the reverse? The star, okay, that's good. Um, power number three, you could be letting go of maybe something that is toxic here, right? Um, I'm not even going to lie to you. I, I, think, I feel like the nicest way I want to put it for power three is with this devil and the queen of wands in the reverse. It's almost like I was hearing spirits say the devil is behind you, okay? Um, now... For some of you with the devil in reverse, like I said, you could be healing from something with a star out here. Um, I'm also, I don't know what this is for power three, because I'm also hearing it is safe. Okay. I'm hearing it's safe for you to move forward. Um, the star card talks about hope. It talks about um, rejuvenation. It can talk about healing. Some of you, you may even be healers here. Okay. That could be your gift with the star card. Heavy Aquarius energy. But this is giving me an energy of purifying. Cleansing. What is this Queen of Wands in the reverse though? You see, like, I could see this. I see what comes out underneath her. But I could see this Queen of Wands as, as what I was just saying a little while ago, even for myself. I mean, some of you, you may lack the confidence. And I don't necessarily want to use that word for myself. I just necessarily am in an energy where I, I may be coming across as a little bit stubborn because, you know, I'm saying to spirit, hey, I, I feel like I found something that may have worked for me. But they're kind of saying to me, yeah, that's great, you know. But guess what? There, There's something else over there that you need to kind of plant seeds over there or you need to go over there and explore that. Or you need, like I said, to broaden, broaden your horizon here. And I'm kind of like, well... I'm good here. And they're like, well, your job doesn't just stop here. Do you know what I mean? With the Queen of Wands in the reverse. But show me what else. Why is this Queen of Wands in the reverse? 
So I'm seeing the Six of Wands with the Knight of Swords, right? And I feel like this is Spirit saying, hey, listen, victory is over there. You better seize the opportunity. I just want one card for this Queen of Wands in the reverse. Now, for some of you, there may have been another energy here. Like I said, maybe an energy that was kind of toxic around you. Um, it could be even been an energy of someone who is, how would I say this? Someone who has low self-esteem or low confidence. And maybe you remove that person from your life. And spirit is saying with that knight of swords, hey, listen, now it's time to go towards your victory with the knight of swords and six of wands, okay? But show me one card for this queen of wands in the reverse. What are we getting stuck on? We have a queen of pentacles. So it definitely could be you. <laughs> All right. Clear message. Okay. So I'm seeing a two of wands. I'm also seeing the prince of swords is coming out again. And then we have a king of pentacles in the upright. So for some, I could be talking to masculines as well, right? Now the king of pentacles has come out. We just saw the queen of pentacles. What is the prince of swords? Uh, the Seven of Wands almost coming out sideways. The Seven of Wands, again, with the Prince of Swords, is that energy of seizing some sort of opportunity, right? The Seven of Wands talks about standing your ground. Um, it also talks about you being very much protected here, okay? You know, look at that, yeah. What did I just say when we had the lion come out in this? It always makes me think of the ancestors and angels. In this Seven of Wands, in this deck, you see the lion right behind this person. Some of you may have fire heavy in your chart here. It makes me think of the sun card. And the sun card to me talks about positiveness. It talks about being happy. It also talks about illumination. So some of you with that star card coming out, you know, maybe you're going to go on to do something where it is that you are going to be in the public eye. Give me one more for the Page of Swords and this Seven of Wands. The Knight of Wands and the Queen of Cups. You know, the Knight of Wands to me can talk about being, being enthusiastic about something. It can talk about... Um, Yeah, I'm hearing seizing the moment here. Now you've got the Queen of Cups. This could be an energy of you needing to follow your heart. The Queen of Cups is also an energy of someone who's very intuitive. But she's also very, you know, kind, caring, nurturing here. I feel like this is an energy of follow your heart. Follow what it is that you are passionate about here. Yeah, don't miss an opportunity here with the Four of Cups. And I just saw the Wheel of Fortune. With the magician. So someone here in pile three, you have all the tools that you need to create something. What is this king of pentacles with the queen of wands in the reverse and the two of wands? What is this king of pentacles? The nine of swords and we, oh, damn, we have the king of cups. So for someone here, whether this is about a relationship um, with the king and queen of cups coming out here, especially the king of cups clarifying this king of pentacles energy, I feel like this is an energy where, you know, even though someone here may be having some sort of anxiety and stress with the nine of swords, okay? Spirit is saying, follow your heart here because it looks like someone with a two of wands, you know, that you may be at a crossroads, you know, two of wands can talk about needing to make a decision about something power free. But I feel like spirit is saying to me here, especially if you are holding on to someone else that you know, this is a toxic situation or you know that this person or whatever doesn't serve you anymore. And again, it could be a mindset here, right? But spirit is saying, make a choice here to plant some fresh new seeds somewhere 
um, because it seems like it's going to go in your favor. I'm hearing the new is going to go in your favor here. Okay. What is that Nine of Swords about, Spirit? The Palfrey, the High Priestess, and the Eight of Cups. Landed on that dragonfly. High Priestess. It makes me feel like someone's intuition is telling them to walk away from something. Something that no longer emotionally fulfills them. And you see it's almost like this energy where this yeah, this kind of, I'm going to call it a mermaid. <laughs> it's almost like um, this mermaid is looking at this star. And it's almost like it's the star that's guiding this mermaid or drawing her in. And what is interesting is that we have the star out here already with the page of swords okay so somebody definitely could be watching someone maybe they're being um inspired here in pile free um but they're allowing fear and anxiety to control their actions and their movements here yeah tower nine of cups yeah and the lovers someone here may have had some sort of epiphany um about maybe how they feel about another person right but take it how it resonates guys so, give me two cards for pile three. What did we just have? Fall on the floor. Someone's name could be Chantel or even Daniel. But um, let me see what fell on the floor, but I'm going to put them back. So you have Azra. It says your desired outcome will occur in the very near future. It says have patience and faith and don't try to force it to happen. Then you have Daniel. It says, I am the angel of marriage and I am assisting you right now. So someone here definitely could be married in pile three. And then you have Chantel. Damn. So it says new romance is intimate. It says either with a newcomer or through reunited passion in your existing relationship. It says be open to giving and receiving love. Now, this card alone is making me feel like someone here may either be married and they kind of feel like they you know, would maybe would have more luck or they feel like they would be better off with someone else. Um, but yeah, it feels like a difficult decision here. All right, just two cards for pile three. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Give me one card for pile three. Thank you, Spirit. Ooh. Okay. Mm. All right, Power Free. Let's see what's going on. So the first one, oh, Daniel came back out. So it says, I am the angel of marriage and I am assisting you right now. Okay. And then you have patience. It says, now is the time to learn, study and gather information. It says, enjoy being a student. It says, because in the future, you will synchronize your knowledge into action. So let me shut up. <laughs> I was about to say so. Yeah. Anyway, so you you have the snake card coming out here. <laughs> and it is a number 28, okay, which boils down to a 10. Now it says your intuition and healing powers will guide you to a better path. It says just be careful. So the tens does talk about endings. It talks about completions here. I, again, I don't know with this devil and this queen of wands in the reverse. I don't know if someone has a snake around them here. The green, um, the color green could be significant here. But at the bottom of the deck, we do have the angel, okay? It says your angels are guiding and protecting you on your spiritual journey. I don't know, this angel card is, is making me feel like that star card almost. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> All right, the star card is behind it. I don't know, look at that. And the chariot, where I was saying, I don't know, it's almost like, I don't know if someone is supposed to be going towards this star energy where I showed you the other card, you know, the, the mermaid pointing to the star. The spirit is trying to guide someone in a certain direction, yeah. Um, okay, so that is what I have here, Virgos. 
So, I don't know, I just thought like a, something a little bit different today, okay? But um, if anything in these readings or pals resonated with you, I do ask that you hit the thumbs up for me, guys. Um, but if this is where we part, Virgos, Crosswatcher, stay safe. Love and light, guys.